creeping things and beasts of the earth after its kind, and it was so. And God made the beasts, and God made the earth, God made the beasts of the earth after his kind, and it was so. And God made the beasts after his kind, and the cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind, and God saw that it was good. And God said, Let us make man in our own image, and, and after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl in the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree, in which the fruit of that tree yields seeds. To you it shall be for meat. To every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for meat, and it was so. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the hosts of them. And on the seventh day God ended his work, which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. Herein ends the reading. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Let us pray. Let us bow the Arise. O God, who was wonderfully, did wonderfully create man, and hast more wonderfully redeemed him, grant us who beseech thee such strength of mind to withstand the enticements of sin, that we may be found worthy to attain to our everlasting joy. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who with thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit Livest and reignest ever one God, world without end. Amen. And as the Jews were led through the water of the Red Sea, so we are led through the baptismal waters to freedom of sin, newness of life, and promise of eternal glory. And it came to pass that in the morning watch the Lord looked unto the host of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and of the cloud, and troubled the host of the Egyptians, and took off their chariot wheels that they drave them heavily, so that the Egyptians said, Let us flee from the face of Israel, for the Lord fighteth for them against the Egyptians. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thine hand over the sea, that the waters may come again upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots, and upon their horsemen. And Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to his strength when the morning appeared. And the Egyptians fled against it. And the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea, and the waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen and all the hosts of Pharaoh that came into the sea after them. There remained not so much as one of them, but the children of Israel walked upon dry land in the midst of the sea, and the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day out of the hand of the Egyptians. And Israel saw the Egyptians dead upon the seashore. And Israel saw that great work which the Lord did upon the Egyptians. And the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord and his servant Moses. Then sang Moses and the children of Israel this song unto the Lord and spake, saying, I will sing unto the Lord, for he hath triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider hath he thrown into the sea.
We will sing unto the Lord, for he hath triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider hath he thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and song. He has become my salvation. He is my God, and I will praise him. My Father's God, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. Let us pray. Let us bow the knee. All right. O oh God, whose miracles of old we perceive to shine forth even in our time, who didst deliver one people from the pursuit of the Egyptians by the power of thy right hand, and dost now through the water of regeneration bestow thy saving health upon all nations, vouchsafe that the fullness of the whole world may be numbered among the sons of Abraham, made partakers of the dignity of Israel, through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who with thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit, livest and reignest ever one God, world without end. Amen. In the next lesson, the prophet Isaiah describes the church, cleansed and purified by holy baptism, which we must keep without stain of sin. In that day shall the branch of the Lord be beautiful and glorious, and the fruit of the earth shall be excellent and comely for them that are escaped of Israel. And it shall come to pass that he is left in Zion, and that he remaineth in Jerusalem shall be called holy, even every one that is written among the living in Jerusalem. When the Lord shall have washed away the filth of the daughters of Zion, and shall have purged the blood of Jerusalem from the midst thereof by the spirit of judgment, and by the spirit of burning. And the Lord will create upon every dwelling place of Mount Zion, and upon her assemblies, a cloud and smoke by day, and the shining of a flaming fire by night. For upon all the glory shall be a defense. And there shall be a tabernacle for a shadow in the daytime from the heat, and for a place of refuge, and for a covert from storm and from rain. My well-beloved hath a vineyard in a very fruitful hill. And he fenced it and gathered out the stones thereof, and planted it with the choicest vine, and built a tower in the midst of it. And also made a winepress therein, for the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel. Let us pray, let us bow the knee. Arise. O God, who by the mouth of thy holy prophet has manifested thyself in all the children of thy church, to be in all places thy dominion, the sower of good seed, and the husbandman of thine elect branches, grant unto thy people who are named by thy, named thy vineyard and harvest field, that being purged from all thorns and briars, they may be made to bring forth worthy fruit and abundance, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And lastly, we hear the warning of Moses that we should obey God's law. This is our baptismal pledge to serve God according to His will. Moses therefore wrote this song the same day and taught it to the children of Israel. And he gave Joshua the son of Nun a charge and said, Be strong and of good courage, for thou shalt bring the children of Israel into the land where I swear unto them I will be with thee. And it came to pass. When Moses had made an end of writing the words of this law in the book, until they were finished, that Moses commanded the Levites, which bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord, saying, 
Take this book of the law and put it in the side, inside the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God, that it may be there for a witness against thee, for I know thy rebellion and thy stiff neck. Behold, while I am yet alive with you this day, ye shall be, ye shall, ye have been rebellious against the Lord, and how much more after my death. Gather unto me all the elders of your tribes, your officers, that I may speak these words in their ears, and call heaven and earth to record against them. For I know that after my death ye will utterly corrupt yourselves, and turn aside from the way wherein I have commanded you. And the evil will befall you in the latter days, because you will do evil in the sight of the Lord, to provoke him to anger through the works of your hands. And Moses spake in the ear of all the congregation of Israel the words of this song until they were ended. Give ear, O ye heavens, and I will speak, and hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. My doctrine shall drop as the rain, my speech shall distill as the dew, as the small rain upon the tender earth, and as the showers upon the grass. Because I will publish the name of the Lord. Ascribe ye greatness unto our God. He is the rock. His work is perfect. For all his ways are judgment. A God of truth and that without iniquity. Just and right is the Lord. Let us pray. Let us bow the knee. Arise. O God, the exaltation of thy humble, and the strength of them that do stand, who by thy holy servant Moses did vouchsafe so to instruct thy people in the chanting of thy sacred song, that the repeating of the law by them might be profitable for our learning, stir up thy power among all the fullness of the nations whom thou hast justified, and grant us gladness, assuaging fear, that the sins of all may be blotted out by thy forgiveness, and that which was denounced in vengeance may turn to our salvation. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who with thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit, livest and reignest ever one God, world without end. Amen. Amen. Congregations should kneel at this time. We now beg and the help of the saints, our prayer should be that all the baptized may remain strong in the faith. Our responses should be loud and clear as we call upon God for mercy and upon his saints for help on our behalf. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Kyrie eleison. Christ, O oh Christ, hear us. O oh Christ, graciously hear us. O oh God, the Father of heaven, have mercy upon us. O oh God, the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy. O oh God, the Holy Ghost, have mercy upon us. Holy Trinity, one God, have mercy upon us. Holy Mary, pray for us. Holy Mother of God, pray for us. Holy Virgin of Virgins, pray for us. Saint Michael, Disciples of the Lord. 
May he, by the secret mingling of his divine power, make fruitful this water prepared for the regeneration of mankind, that having received sanctification and being born again a new creature, there may come forth an offspring of heaven from the spotless womb of this divine fountain, that all, whether sex divide them in body or age in time, may alike be brought forth into one childhood by grace, their mother. For then, so Lord, at thy command, let every unclean spirit depart. For far hence from the wickedness of the craft of the devil, let no power of the enemy here have place or portion. Let it not ensure and compass us around, and snare and compass around. Let it not waylay us in secret. Let it not taint us with his corruption. May this holy and undefiled creature be free from every assault of the enemy and purified by the departure of all iniquity. May it be a living fountain, water that doth regenerate a purifying stream, that all who shall be washed in the laver of salvation may by the operation of the Holy Ghost within them obtain the grace of perfect purification. I exercise thee, O creature of water, by the living God, by the true God, by the holy God, by God who in the beginning through his word divided thee from the dry land, whose spirit moved upon thee, who commanded thee to flow from paradise and commanded thee to water the whole earth with thy four rivers, who in the desert by wood bestowed upon thee sweetness when thou wast bitter <coughs> that men might drink, who brought thee forth from the rock that he might refresh the people wearied with thirst, whom he had delivered out of Egypt. I exercise thee through Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who in Cana of Galilee by a wondrous miracle did change through through his power, power into wine, who walked upon thee with his feet and was baptized by thee by John in Jordan, who brought thee forth together with blood from his side and commanded his disciples that they should baptize in thee them that believe, saying, Go ye teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, that thou mayest be made holy water, blessed water, water that washeth away stains and cleanses sin. I command thee, therefore, every unclean spirit, every phantom, every lie, be rooted out, and flee away from this creature of water, that to them who shall be baptized therein, it may become a font of water springing up into life eternal, regenerating them unto God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall come to judge the living and the dead, and the world by fire. Amen. Let us pray. O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God, who does sanctify spiritual waters, we humbly entreat thee that thou would vouchsafe to look upon this ministry of our humble servants and to send forth upon these waters made ready for the washing and purifying of men the angel of holiness, to end that the sins of their former life being washed and their guilt cleansed, they being regenerate may be worthy to be made a spotless habitation for the Holy Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigns with thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit, ever one God, world without end. Amen.
May the power of the Holy Ghost descend upon the fullness of this font. May the Holy Ghost descend the power and the fullness of this font. May the power of the Holy Ghost descend upon the fullness of this font. And make the whole substance of this water to be fruitful unto regeneration. Here may the stains of every sin be blotted out. Here may nature, created in thine image, be restored to the honor of its first estate, and cleansed from all the defilement of its old condition, that every man who cometh to this sacrament of regeneration may be born again into the new childhood of true innocence, through Jesus Christ thy Son, our Lord, who shall come to judge the quick and the dead, and the world by fire. Amen. Amen. May this font be sanctified and made fruitful by the oil of salvation, for thus shall be born again therefrom unto life eternal. May this inpouring of the chrism of our Lord Jesus Christ into the Holy Spirit, the paraclete, be wrought in the name of the Holy Trinity. Amen. Amen. May this commingling of the chrism of sanctification and of the oil of unction and of the water of baptism be wrought in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. <coughs> like as the heart desireth the water brooks, so long as my soul after thee, O God. My soul is a thirst for God, yea, even for the living God. When shall I come to appear before the presence of God? My tears have been my meat day and night, while they daily say unto me, Where is now thy God? The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, mercifully look upon the devout prayers of this people, now called to a new birth who, like the heart, seek the fountain of thy waters, and mercifully grant that the thirst of their faith may, by the mystery of baptism, sanctify them in body and soul. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who with thee, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, liveth and reigneth ever one God, world without end. Amen. Amen. The congregation may light their candles at this time. Many Christians will be born again in the year to come from these holy waters of regeneration. Let us pray for those who are the first fruits of this blessed water. In them, the mysteries of Christ, for those who are the first fruits of the blessed water, in them the mysteries of Christ's resurrection is now accomplished. With Christ they die to sin and evil. With Christ they rise anew to new life. Now the baptismal waters made holy by solemn prayers by the candle of the risen Christ, by the sacred oils, are carried in procession to the baptismal font, to the sacred place where the Christians will be made in this coming year. From the font will rise up new Catholics, new Orthodox Christians, with this life of Christ born of God's grace, through the waters of baptism which have been blessed before our eyes. Please turn in your missiles to page 162.
This is the annual renewal of your baptismal vow, which we do every year at Easter at Pascha. And since most of you were probably baptized as children, uh, this may be one of the first times you're actually answering for yourself. On this most holy night, dearly beloved brethren, Holy Mother Church keeps vigil. Calling to mind the death and burial of our Lord Jesus Christ, she renders him love for love. And celebrating his glorious resurrection, she rejoices with great gladness. Now, since, as the Apostle teaches, we have by baptism been buried with Christ into death, so just as Christ rose from the dead, we too must walk in newness of life. Knowing that our former nature has been crucified with Christ, so that we are no longer sl slaves of guilt, no longer. Let us therefore reckon ourselves dead to sin, but alive unto God through Christ Jesus our Lord. Wherefore, dearly beloved brethren, now that our Lenten exercises are done, let us renew the promises of our holy baptism, which we once renounced Satan and his works, <coughs> together with the world which is an enmity with God, and promise to serve faithfully God in his holy church. Therefore, do you renounce Satan and all his works and all his pomps? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born into this world and who suffered for us? Do you also believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins? the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. We do believe. Now let us pray to God all together as our Lord Jesus Christ taught us to pray. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name.